What's up? This is Joel Lozon, and this is PKA episode 70. Don't make me choke, bitch. There you go, baby. <laughs> yeah! Get choked! Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so on the show tonight is Woody's Gamer Tag, Wings of Redemption, Redneck, and UFC fighter Joe Lozon. So, Joe, coming off a big fight, get your win, baby. It's a big weekend, big weekend. Nice. And, and you know what? Look, so Melvin talked a little trash coming into the thing, right? You know, he, he was confident. But was it over the top? Like, you guys seem to be pretty respectful in the ring. One of the first things you did, which I thought was super cool after your win, was you came over to him and sort of put your hand on his shoulder. Like, it, it, there was no genuine hatred there, was there? No, no, it was pretty cool. I mean, I, I met Melvin before, and he was super cool with me, really nice. So, you know, we talked about how, you know, there might be a, come to, a time where we're supposed to fight, and, and, you know, it's just nothing but respect and all this other stuff. And then, you know, like, I was in a sauna cutting weight with him and all that stuff. But regardless of, you know, being cool with someone, not being cool, like, you're going to fight and you're going to try and do your best. And, uh, you know, but I'm, but I'm cool with him after, you know. He, he, was, he was perfectly fine to me. I was perfectly fine to him. You know, everything's good. All right. So I've had a question about this. It, it, and people are built differently, right? But it, to me, what I think my odds are going into any kind of competition, whether it be fighting, swimming, video games, whatever – doesn't really have much of an impact on what I do. But there are other guys who are like, oh my gosh, you know, if you don't think that you're going to win this, you've already lost. Yeah. Where do you fall in that? Like, what, what are you thinking? Um, I just try to keep a clear head. I think when you start getting mad or upset or whatever, you know, that's just, you know, leading to, you know, you, you having a bad experience. You know, you get, you get pissed and you try to, you know, you try to do something extra hard or, you know, you try and do something out of character. You know, I think that that is kind of going to lead to your downfall. If you approach it and you're real cerebral about it, I, I feel like you, you're going to perform at your best. I, so, yeah, I think that applies in a lot of things, too. I, you were the underdog headed into that fight, right? Yeah, like three or four to one or something. I, yeah. I've seen three to one. I've even seen like five to one. I saw seven to two. I, but, yeah, like a, a pretty good size underdog. Did that get in your head at all? Does it bother you? Does it, like, what does that um, do to you? No, not really. Not really. I mean, I, I, I was thinking about it a little bit. But at the same time, like, Honestly, odds are more based around how people are going to bet. So even if the bookies think that one person's going to win, they all odds are made based on how they think people are going to bet. You know, Melvin was running around acting super cocky and things like that. So so they made him, you know, a, a you know, a big favorite so that people betting on him wouldn't, you know, make as much if he did win. So it doesn't really it didn't mess with me too much, you know. It was more so, you know, whatever. It, it's everyone else's opinion. You know, obviously it didn't matter. You know, it, it took <laughs> less than a minute for me to prove everyone wrong. So Yeah. That was sweet, man. That was sweet. <laughs> Did you eventually sink that choke? It, it was kind of on his jaw. Yeah, when... I was on his. I was on his chin first, and uh -huh. then I just, kind of, I just said "screw it," and I just kind of ripped it back and forth, and then it, it popped under his chin. Okay, yeah, because like it, in the gym, sometimes people will will tap from a like a pain choke like that, you know, because if it's on his jaw, if it's on his chin, it's not choking him. It's just really unpleasant. But at the UFC level, no one chokes. No one taps to unpleasantness. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. you're taught you're taught to keep your chin down, right, so that you can't get you. Right. Yep. Yeah. What okay. did he do wrong? Should he have controlled your other hand? Like, it, it um, seemed... he should have used both of his hands to try and control my one hand. Yeah, yeah. The, the one that um, the one that wasn't on his chin, right? He should have prevented yes. that from right. getting the grip. Yep. Yeah. I, I was seeing that. I'm glad you guys are in this. I'll be like, what did he do wrong? Well, yeah, he put him on his but... back to begin with. <laughs> 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 it was the beginning, though. You know, I think that you know when he got his bell rung, you know, from the jab. So I think that's what really did it. You know, it's 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 entirely different when you're completely clear-headed, and you know what's going on. You know, it's it's a it's a different story altogether when you've just you know been smashed in the head and you can hardly stand. Yeah, yeah. who's got? The, there's a boxer who has the quote that like you know all the game plans go out the window after that first punch Tyson. in the face. Tyson, everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face. Ah, Matt Tyson was a beast. He knows oh, a thing man. or two about getting hit in the face. Yeah. <sighs> All right. Have, uh, this is something different. I just thought I asked real quick. Uh huh. Obviously, you're a great MMA fighter, but how many like from the time you've been training as a professional? Have you ever been in any like? Obviously, you don't drink, but uh, any type of outside of the ring in the general public fights? Like um, I was gonna say bar fights, but obviously you probably don't go yeah, to the bars. Not really. I uh, I got in like two fights in high school. Uh, they both were the same kid who's actually a kid I'm friends with, my buddy Jake. And uh, you know, it was over a football game. You know, like one, well, the first one was a late hit on my brother, and then or what I thought was a late hit on my brother, a cheap shot. And then the second one, I don't remember what it was. I remember we were talking on Instant Messenger though, and we decided we were gonna meet halfway. So I walked towards his house, he walked towards mine, met in a field, 
I, I hit him with a hook in the face, smashed his nose, and then he came to Six Flags with us the next day. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So it wasn't, it wasn't wasn't that serious of a fight, you know. But I mean, but th that was pretty much it, you know. I, I have an idea that would be epic, at least from my uh, point of view. So so picture this, right? Come Super Bowl weekend, you do your next UFC fight. You take the guy down, you, you get your win, Joe Rogan's interviewing you, and you somehow slip in there that you controlled the engagement. Can we make that happen? I can think about that. <laughs> I can try. I mean, if, if I can remember, if I can remember what's going on, I will try to, to slip that in. <laughs> yeah, if you told him, you know, yeah, I worked my defense, I controlled my engagements, that would be so <laughs> epic. Oh, man. I should just start working that in every interview. <laughs> you, know, you got to control the engagement, you know, wrestling, you know, you got to gotta get that takedown. <laughs> yeah. There it is, man. Oh, totally crazy. Dude, so we played um, Xbox the other night. Yes. Right? It, 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 here's the truth, right? So I was nervous about how well I would play in front of Joe, right? Like, it, I, Joe and I have been talking about, you know, hopping on Black Ops for a while now. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna hop on there. I'm gonna get all these like even KD games. I'm gonna suck. And like, you know, I, I and I kind of like dodged it for a little bit. And then we played the other night. I did all right. Like, it, yeah, you, you definitely did more than all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like at, at first we brought in Optic Jcap. And look, I'm not pretending to be the player that I. People who don't know, he's one of the best players in the world. And uh, for the games he was there, we kind of traded top spot in the lobby. And then he he left. And uh, for the next, I don't know, four or five games or so, I was just doing my thing. I had some, like, 50 and 4 games, stuff like that, getting choppers and dogs a lot. Until the end of the night when I kind of wore out. I don't know what time it was. And uh, I was just like, yeah, that, that worked out really well. And I... I think I'm never going to play with you again, Joe. I think I'm going to just... <laughs> <laughs> Got gotta to maintain that staying above the bar. Yeah, it ties into my, my strategy with my son, right? So... So get this, right? sometime, maybe next year or so, when he's nine, I'm going to like accidentally let him see my, my like full-sized adult penis, right? So he, he's going to have this, this mental image of me being ginormous, like, oh my God, oh my God, that thing was, was just like in a whole different universe than mine. And then I will never let him see it again, ever, ever. It will just burn into his head as this legend, this thing that he can't forget, right? So, <laughs> those Wait. two things seem really parallel to me. Like I, I'm never going to play with Joe again. Got really, 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 like um, pedophile. <laughs> it has to take place in the bathroom, or that's going to be fucked up. <laughs> right, you right. Walk in and got to pee or something. I'll just come yeah. strolling out of the shower, like I didn't know he was there. You know, just like swinging like a horse. You know, full size grown up man. <laughs> And then, and then that's it. Never again. You know, just oh my, my dad's a legend. It'll never be that huge. That's how it's, <laughs> that's how it rolls. No, dude. What you'll do is that you'll give the kid a you give him a complex. Like he might have a he might get some daddy's jeans or whatever. That's... And he might have a good size wing himself. But in his mind, he think you know, if he's got seven eight inches, six five, whatever inches he got, he's gonna always think, I'll never be the man my dad is. That's not my fucking <laughs> problem. That's my goal. That's, <laughs> that's oh, you, that you don't want him to think that his whole life, though. Because <laughs> might, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. That's funny. <laughs> that is crazy. Uh, oh, I, I'd, shit. I'd be all right if that made it into a Bongster animated adventure right there. <laughs> <laughs> it just depends on how, how well he animated it, you know. I <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. So I got a question. I'm going to start with Redneck. Uh oh. Is it harder to be a man or a woman? And, and you know, I'm looking at like some of the stresses on man, like you know, being a wage earner, showing like a personal strength, body issues, sex organs, social pressures, making friends. In general, who has a, a, a tougher lot in life, men or women? Men. And men. Go yeah, ahead. all day. Well, one most. Most men die before the women the same. You know, men die before women. Mm. Let's see. Two, we have to provide everything. Sorry, Kitty. I know you were listening. Three, uh-oh. <laughs> Three, now here's the best part, okay? A woman can just lay there. <laughs> okay? If Let me tell you something. Days I have a headache and she wants to get it on, hey. It happens. Hey, 
you got to knock that headache out and knock that nut out. You can't just lay there. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, to me, let me tell you something else, too. Being a woman is easier getting jobs. You think? I believe so. And to, and look, 50 years ago, I would not agree with you. Mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't have said that. But today, I believe that. You take you take you take two guy you take two people, both of them got the same education. You walk some guy in with his little hair slicked back in a suit, and you walk some woman in there all done up, with a little cleavage. Paintball keys gonna kill me, <laughs> but I'm gonna tell you which one I'd hire. <laughs> Here, you know? here's the, all right. So on the man side, the whole social pressure pressure to be the the breadwinner is a tough thing, right? And I know that nowadays so many families have, you know, both men and women earning and stuff. But still, it's uncommon when the man isn't, you know, bringing home the, the bacon, right? It, it, if a guy was a stay-at-home husband, you know, that oftentimes that, uh, that doesn't go over well, you know, socially. You know, people don't see him as the, you know, the man that, that he would be if he were out there having some sort of professional career. Um, you know, what's cool about being a guy, being stronger, Right. Like, you know, not that I'm some sort of superhero, but, you know, I can walk around the movie theater and know that I can I can beat up pretty much every girl there. Right. That's on lockdown. And a lot of the guys, if you're a girl, you have to walk around knowing that the majority of the population will kick your ass. That's got to suck. Right. You know, you're like physically vulnerable everywhere you go. True. Um, then you marry. Then you marry somebody like Joe Lauzon. So <laughs> get you a Joe, and then it's all good. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go opposite. I, I think it's way tougher to be a girl. Oh yeah. You got to deal with a period once a month, forever, pretty much. So do guys. Yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The part we deal with sometimes is worse than the part they deal with. You know? <laughs> and then high school girls. Yeah. Yeah. Which is ever. Oh yeah. my gosh, I was going to go there too. Like it, the the friendship dynamics that women have to deal with are so complicated. They're so tricky. They're, you know, I'm your friends when we're 1v1, but when we're in a group, I'm not your friend anymore. We're friends at home, but we're not friends at school. We're friends this week, we're not friends next week, but we will be friends the following week. Girl relationships are just freaking underhanded and tricky and weird. Whereas guys, you know, you pretty much girls you know, in a cackle. get what you get. You, you hear all the time girls be like, see, this is why I don't hang out with girls. You know, this is why I only have guy friends. You mm -hmm. never hear any guys saying, oh, I'm never hanging out with the guys. This is why I only have girlfriends. It right. never goes that way. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Oh, and then, <laughs> like, and, and, you know, this, of course, is a great example of social experimentation. But you look at these reality TV shows. Whenever they split up groups into guys and girls, the girls are dysfunctional as hell, right? They're all catty getting along. The girls cannot get along with girls. Then they'll take one and put them on the guys' team, and it's like this oasis of happiness. You know, <laughs> people that can be freaking civil to one another. Girls are vicious. Wings, your answer? What's tougher, girl, being a girl or being a guy? All right. Well, let me go ahead and weigh the options. Out. Obviously, there's childbirth periods. There is the cackle kind of deal. Guys, pretty much if shit goes down, they expect the guy to stand up for them, put his life on the line. If there's a snake in the yard, the guy has to kill it. If there's a spider, the guy has to kill it. Money, the guy that's the guy's problem. Holding the books, generally the guy's problem. I think it's tougher to be a guy, to be perfectly honest. There you go. It's so official. There, 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 there's just so much weight on a, on a guy. Like, you have to defend her. You got to feed her, protect her, do, do the whole nine. Yeah. <laughs> and then give her the whole nine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Seven times a week, right? Who's with me? Seven times a week. No. Is yeah. that all? I'll be, I'll, be I'll be lucky if I get one out. <laughs> it's like uh, my dad used to have a joke. He'd talk his shit. He said, "Yeah, I told this one girl time. I told this girl one time, I'm gonna give you 12 inches, baby." And she said, "Oh my god!" She said, "I've never had 12. I've had 10." He said, "I'm gonna give you 12." And he and he's like, mm -hmm, "I'm gonna give you 12." And she said. Hi. I can't wait to see it. He said, I'll have to give it to you on four different occasions. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Oh, man. God. That's just crazy. Dude, did you guys see the Only Use Me Blade Minecraft video? We have no, to I talk haven't. about that. What? You didn't see that? But I've seen the Survival Horror Mercadurka video. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> I didn't see all the answers. But but on the Blade, Redneck, did you see it? No, I haven't watched it yet. I got it saved. I'm going to watch it when I get oh, time. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. So here's the, the general premise. <laughs> he says, in this kind of tone, you know, over the course of the whole commentary, it's about Minecraft. And he's like, so, you know, like, uh, I don't have any problems with Minecraft. I don't mean to be hating on Minecraft. But, to me, it looks like Minecraft sucks. It's like the ugly bitch at school <laughs> that, <laughs> that everybody else says is hot. And he just goes on and on and on and, and talks about how Minecraft is terrible. He's like, it's like Legos, right? He's like, but most of us, we realize Legos fucking suck, and we stopped playing with them as a child. He's like, why would I play Minecraft? And he just goes, <laughs> <laughs> and, oh, it was the funniest thing. And he actually got, like, negative hours. Like, all the Minecraft lovers were, like, gone. They didn't want anything to do with someone who, uh, who didn't like Minecraft. So, um, yeah. What do we think here? Like, it, first of all, I thought it was pretty ballsy to come out against Minecraft. People think Call of Duty is the biggest uh, gaming thing on on YouTube. It's not. Minecraft is number one, and then after that, I'm not quite sure. The League of Legends, World of Warcraft, Call of Duty are all really big, but um, there is no doubt that number one is is Minecraft. That's just that's it. There's, there's, everyone else fights for a second. So, uh, so yeah. What do we think about this concept? I, I've never even tried Minecraft. I, it, it, I, I have for about three minutes, and then my seven-year-old was like, Dad, I've got to play that, Dad. I'm like, here. And I really? got up and walked away from the computer. For real. Yep. I, I would play with Legos before I played Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> Joe laying it down. Yeah, I, I, I loved the video. It was ballsy. I, I've never tried Minecraft. I don't want to hate on it, but it, it just doesn't look like my cup of tea, man. It's, uh, I don't know. Like, I, I have this thing, right? When you look at the gaming world, who's who in gaming, right? Like, for me, the first-person shooters, they're the jocks of the gaming world, right? That's where the cool kids are. That's where the Twitch guys are. That's, those, like, they are undeniably, like, the, the top guys, right? When you look at the World of Warcraft guys... Those are the nerds, you know. That, yeah. that that's that's gaming's you know nerd area. All the, the real life nerds go to World mm. of Warcraft, and and that's that's them. Um, we right, you know the the we system. Those are the homeschool kids, right? They don't play with other people. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're they're, they're kind of out there. They're 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 off the mainstream. We those are homeschool kids. Left for dead. That has to be the cheerleaders, right? I mean, this is the only place where, <laughs> where it's the only game that girls actually play, Left 4 Dead. If you go to Left 4 Dead, it, like, if you want to pick up girls on Xbox, it's got to be Left 4 Dead. There, there's, you can't pick up girls on Call of Duty. If there's one in there, it's like, oh, my gosh, you know, it's, you know, you'd be really surprised. And uh, the crafters, like the Minecraft guys, I'm thinking that's like the theater and drama club. I'm thinking that's like the, the fucking preschool club. <laughs> hater eating the hater aid <laughs> some guy got mad at me for homeschool jokes I, look i will make a minecraft video only if somebody else like here set it all up and i'll jump in my little guy and be like what what age oh. do you normally start playing at legos three or four like a toddler i have toddlers in this house they don't play with legos i don't know if i give it i don't know if i give legos to a three-year-old I think you're asking for trouble. <laughs> you gotta yeah. wait till they stop eating their toys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but choke on his neck, be all poking out with Legos, sticking out the side. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a cartoon lizard that ate something wrong. Yeah. yeah. So did I, I don't know. I don't have any. I, I'm actually just telling jokes here. Don't don't get all hater or hater so, on me. Somebody guys. had a good message I just saw in the stream. It said uh, something about you gotta have a good imagination. For Minecraft. See, I don't have one of those. Yeah, me neither. I'm... I, I want to come home and just shoot motherfuckers, you know, just blam! Oh, dude. Can, can you imagine me playing Minecraft? I, I imagine it like a children's macaroni creation. Like, just you know, a bunch of random shit, <laughs> you know, piled up in, into nothing. Look, Mom, I call it Universe. And, and there it is. I know what I'd be making. What? Be making an Olympic-sized pool. 
and a place for the bitches to stand. Make me a Bentley garage. <laughs> you know what I could do in Minecraft? And I'm sure this has been done a gazillion times. I make could just man cave. I could trim all the bushes into penises. Just go around and make that my mission. <laughs> right? <laughs> Let's do it again and again. Make penis yeah. bushes everywhere. The thing I don't like about Minecraft is the way people play it on their commentaries. Be like, hi, Mr. Cow. I'm going to hit the cow. He's got a mushroom on his back. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> mushroom stamp. <laughs> I think Minecraft commentaries are hard. You know, because a lot of times they put out a couple a day. And um, a lot of them are like 15 minutes long. These guys, I mean, they're, they're making 30 minutes of commentary a day forever. And that's a lot. Yeah. I, I think running a Minecraft channel is pretty difficult to do. Do you think Minecraft will ever come to the consoles? The actual real Minecraft? Yeah, they announced it. Okay. I missed that. <laughs> yeah. Lol. Yeah, yeah. So Minecraft is coming. Uh, Fortress Craft is on there now. Yeah, I've tried that shit too. <laughs> uh, I don't I, I, for me it's like I don't want to invest time in in learning a totally different like genre uh, of game I just want to kill people over and over and over just kill I enjoy that yeah that's, yeah. that's, that's my kind of gaming right there it doesn't bother me to learn a different type of game I just want to learn the type of game people will actually watch. Obviously, people will want to watch Minecraft, but there's just too much time invested in Minecraft. You know, it's hard enough, you know, getting Call of Duty videos. Just imagine if I got to build, like, the fucking Enterprise. It's going to take me two and a half weeks to do one fucking video that might get 20,000 views. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of different games, Joe. Yo. Are you in, are you in any MMA games? Uh, I'm in, like... Two UFC games, but I'm not announced for the the third one that they have coming out, which I think is kind of bullshit. That is yeah. bullshit. Come on, you're like the, the bonus king. One of I the like... uh, one of the developers actually texted me after the fight, telling me great fight, and I'm like, you guys you guys better bump up my stats now for the game. Here's what, here's what we do: we get everybody, everybody, if to tell them if Joe is not in the game, we're not gonna buy it. <laughs> oh, we could do yeah. that, man. We could yeah. make a, we could make a Twitter campaign or something. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that they're gonna have a, a lot of the fighters are gonna be like downloadable content. That's what I'm thinking. No, you uh, need to be in the game. I like agree. The prize possession. I agree. Absolutely. I always wondered this. What what happens if you get put in a game and you're like this weak ass? I remember playing the wrestling games when I was growing up, and in the wrestling game there was this guy called the Hurricane, and he was the worst guy in the game. How's mm -hmm. that gotta make him feel? It's That's a, dude. There was a YouTube video where um, Jason Mayhem Miller went crazy about that. It it, it was a prank. But did, Joe, have you seen that? Yeah, I saw that Mayhem flipping <laughs> on the dude. Yeah, yeah, so they're in like um they're in an office surrounding a pretty big size conference table. And if I remember right, there's like eight or twelve people at the table. And uh, Mayhem Miller sees his stats, like you know his striking, his grappling, or whatever. And goes crazy that he's being underrated. And he starts, like, screaming at people and banging things. And, like, the, the corporate guys who, who write video games are just, like, scared to death at this UFC fighter who's, who's lost his marbles. And, uh, and then he just smiles and says that uh, it's all good. Well played. Well played. Mayhem Miller, that, <laughs> that guy's funny. He did a How to Dress Like Mayhem Miller Halloween costume. You should do that, Joe. Yeah, big ears. <laughs> Yeah, I, I guess you the hair and the ears, right? Big ears and fight gloves, good to go. Yeah, because yeah, all all the MMA guy gets the, they all get y'all all get those cauliflower ears, don't you? Yeah, it's pretty unavoidable. It's from wrestling. Yeah. Ears get squished all the time. D no yeah. one wears ear protection in your gym. Oh no, guys are wearing ear protection at the gym. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they do it sometimes, but it just be becomes annoying, and you end up not wearing it, and then I don't know. And yeah. dude, that shit hurts bad. It's it constricting. Does, it does hurt. That's yeah. my problem. Like you, sometimes you can't pop your head out, or when you can, it's it's uh, just you get caught in chokes. There's nothing worse than getting caught in a choke you shouldn't have, but you yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. And the the um the mouth guard too is a pain in the ass. Like I I swear I I breathe twenty percent less when I put that thing in my mouth. Dude, you gotta get a good mouth guard. You get a good, good mouth guard, like that shit changes everything. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I got one. Um, the the UFC gets them all done for everyone. Uh, by Fight Dentist. Uh, I think they're FightDentist.com. But if you get like a legit mouth guard, it probably costs like a hundred bucks. But 
it, the, the shit is unbelievable what a difference it makes. They allow you to breathe through it while, you, while you're biting yeah, like, down? I, I can't get my mouth guard out of my mouth without using my hands. Like, I can't spit it out. Like, it, it stays up top, and it, it does not move. That is awesome. You know, I actually, I, I kind of got screwed. Like, when I was training for this fight, I got one of my front teeth knocked in. And, like, not completely out of my mouth, but it was, like, super loose. And it's because I wasn't wearing my mouth guard. Like, an idiot. Just grappling. But shit sucks. Yeah. Why don't you just get took out get it like one of those fake bridges put in? Yeah, but I get punched in the face on a pretty normal basis. So, <laughs> so you, you don't wear you don't wear the bridge when you when you're training. Just when yeah, you're going out with the ladies. Yeah, but then but then y- your mouth guard isn't going to be as good because there's no there's no structure there. There's a gap. So your tooth did it move like because you got hit? Oh yeah, yeah. It was like pretty much my tooth was like pointed completely at the back of my neck, back of my throat. Oh, it was like <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. Did it firm so up and stay in place? They're like, what do you got going uh, on? Yeah, it, it, it's good now. I, uh, I, luckily, there's, uh, there's another jiu-jitsu school that's not far, and mm-hmm. the guy that owns it is a dentist. So, <laughs> like, I showed up legit, like, 9.30 at night, like, right when it happened. And uh, he, <laughs> like, he, he basically put, like, a um, like a bond behind it and bundled it up to my my two other teeth. But then I couldn't I couldn't train because I couldn't put a mouth guard in. My tooth was so sore. It was, it was freaking – it's a nightmare. It was, like, right in the middle of when I should be doing all my sparring and stuff, too. Man, so you, you talk about was- – just about knocked out. Yeah, like I, I could have pulled it out. Like I, I was wiggling it in the mirror, and I could have pulled it out. Uh, dude, but can we did... talk about the Skype conversation we had like a week before your fight, where you talked about your knee and ankle? Oh yeah, no, we can talk about that. All right. So I wrote Joe. I don't know, maybe a week before the fight, and I asked him if he was injured. And I asked him because injuries are super common, right? It, as guys uh, work their way up to the fight, they start training at full speed and because of that injuries are really common it, it, some guys say no one enters a fight at 100% and uh, I'm like Joe are you injured and he's like why are you asking I'm like just because people get <laughs> injured and he's like uh, no I'm like are you lying uh, yes and, and like it was text so it's hard to like read sarcasm or like what's going on what was going on were you hurt um I, I rolled my ankle so I, I rolled my ankle back in like March uh-huh. uh huh and I roll. I did the same ankle. I was doing kickboxing. I just stepped on it bad, and it swelled up. So it was like I had like a softball on the side of it. And then, um, so I couldn't train for like a week. I basically just did like light, light, you know, boxing and like just hitting mitts and stuff like that. I couldn't do anything. Then I went back. I, the first night back in the gym, I started rolling around. I feel pretty good. And then I hurt my knee. <laughs> and oh. then I'd have to take another week off. So I take another week off. I go back the first night back. I, that was the night I got my tooth smashed. So I had, like, they're well, in, that, like, the, me, the meatiest part of my camp when I should be doing, like, all my sparring and all that kind of stuff. I got three injuries in, like, three weeks in a row. Like, the worst, tra- worst wow. training camp ever. I wonder what would have happened if the fight was longer than 47 seconds. It, it, it was fine. It was all It was all maybe, <clears throat> I did, like, I got, like, two and a half weeks of hard, hard sparring, like, every single day. So I was in, I was in good shape. So I would have been fine if it went longer. But it, I definitely... Yeah, I, I've never had like a worse training camp with like just injuries. Like not none of them on their own were bad to pull out of the fight, but just bad luck. You know, just stupid nagging stuff one week after the next after the next. Garbage. Well, I wonder if Joe Lonzon could beat up my grandmother. No, <laughs> she's tough as nails. <laughs> you guys see the pictures of her? That depends on if she comes unarmed or not. I think. <laughs> Because Gran- Gangster uh, Granny will slip a knife on him in a minute. Gangster <laughs> Granny. She may have been in more fights as well. Like, she may have the experience edge on Joe Lozano. She, she about to be Joe's new trainer. <laughs> uh, she, Joe got a 20-pound weight advantage on her, but she's good at fighting mountain lions. <laughs> I got another question. I, know that, I don't know that everyone wants to hear all this fight stuff. But your camp, Joe. Yep. So... All right. Yeah, a lot of your peers train together. You know, they're at like American Kickboxing Academy or, or in New Mexico or whatever. And you know, you hear like, oh yeah, you know, like, I don't, whatever. You know, th- these guys are training together. They're all elite level guys. Whereas you, you're the you know the Clydesdale in your gym, right? You're the the guy who's head and shoulders above all the regular horses. I don't know if this analogy's working. Yeah, I hear you. I'm um, with you. But like, so. How does that impact you? What do you think about that? Do you ever think that, you know, you should go and visit another camp, get some time there? Um, you know, I, I've done that before. Like, I went out to Hawaii, training with BJ. I've, I've done this. Mm-hmm. I've done that. Um, you know, I have a couple guys in my gym that are badasses. You know what I mean? Like, they're, they're not as well-known, but they're really, really good fighters. 
And, Usually uh, not well rounded though, right? Like I want to say, do you have like a silver medal judo guy or like what am yeah. I thinking of? Uh, yeah, I got I got a kid, Travis Stevens. He trains with us. Uh, uh-huh. You know, he he comes like I, I met Travis. He's on the U.S. Olympic judo team, and uh, I actually I, I lift with Travis. But uh, they go to this, we both go to this place called Mike Boyles, which mm-hmm. is like maybe half an hour from me. And um, so I met Travis there, and just you know just kind of became friends. And like he was like the toughest egg to crack ever. Like just like just seemed like. It seemed like just like no personality, just didn't really talk a whole lot. It just it took a long time to get him talking, and you know he's just he's real quiet. And um, you know then we got him to come up to my gym, and you know he's he, he was in the Olympics la- uh, last time for judo. He's going, I think the next ones are in London next August. Mm-hmm. He's up there, so like he comes to train with us, so he's a freaking badass. Um, How does you know. so for people that know judo is. Uh... Well, Joe, heck, you could correct me, but judo really focuses a lot on their takedowns. They have all like a million crazy takedowns that work, especially with a gi. And then they have a ground game, but they focus more on the takedowns. Is that pretty on target? Yep, yep, pretty much. And um, uh, so is that the area of your game where he helps you most, making sure your takedowns are sharp? Uh, well, in general, jiu-jitsu and judo are, are very, very similar. It's just where the emphasis is. In judo, mm-hmm. the emphasis is, like you said, it's on takedowns and, and throwing people and things like that. In jiu-jitsu... It's it's all on the ground stuff, you know, getting submissions and things like that. You know, Travis is on the U.S. Olympic judo team, but he specializes in ground stuff. So it's really it's like it's really a lot of jujitsu stuff that he helps me out with. And he's trained with everyone. Like he's trained with really really good guys. Um, you know, so he's got really really good stuff to show. And he's only a little, he's only a little bit bigger than me. He's like 180, 185 pounds. So he's not that much bigger than me. That helps. So what about your hands? Is there anyone there that that can throw? Yeah, you know, and, and then, like, I got this kid, uh, Ben Pitsley, who is phenomenal at, like, mimicking styles, and he's a real good kickboxer. So, like, I work with him, and we'll bring in boxers if we need to. It kind of depends on the fight. So, but we, we break up a lot of my training into different parts. So I'll do full-on rounds and sparring and whatnot, you know, for MMA, but I do way more of breaking things up individually. So working on wrestling and takedowns, working on jiu-jitsu stuff, working on boxing, you know, we, we break it down a lot. So you have no so intention gotta- to... Like visit gyms again. You're pretty happy with the crew you have. Um, I mean, I'll definitely. I'll go and I'll go and you know, I have no problem visiting gyms. But as far as like running a camp, I do it way better. At, you know, having people come to me and figuring out all my own stuff. You know, like I brought in uh, for this camp, I brought in this kid Ricky Lundell, who's phenomenal, like world champ, like uh, and he wrestled at Iowa State, which is like super tough for wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, Kale Sanderson is like pretty much like the best wrestler to ever live. You know, he went undefeated his entire college career, like four-time national champ, gold medalist, uh, you know, like, ridiculous wrestler. And Kale kind of took this kid, Ricky, under his wing, and this kid was already a black belt in jiu-jitsu, too. So, like, this kid's just, like, amazing. So I flew him out and brought him out, to, and he stayed with me in my house for two weeks. So I, I, I feel like I do better off doing that because I have more control over things. And all my coaches are 100% focused on me. If I go to a team like AKA or American Top Team or something like that, you have, you know, you have a, you know, really good coaches, we also have like thirty or forty different fighters, and you're just you're, you're fighting to get one small piece of that coach's attention and time. And you know, I, I feel like I can I can be way more selfish and, and just get a lot more out of it by doing it on my own. That makes sense. If, if that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, it does. It does. Like as a swimmer, I kind of get that. Like you know, I don't know. Heck, anytime the coach actually coaches you, you're like, ah, oh, cool. You know, he's giving me his attention. Whereas you know, you got. A handful of coaches yeah. just fully. I mean, if, if you could have the best coach in the planet, but you had to split them with ten other people, or you could have the second or third best coach and have them all to yourself. You know, yeah. you're better off having you know the coach all to yourself. Yeah. All right, I yeah, get yeah. that. Uh, question for Wings of Redemption. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I get a lot of guys saying that as a small YouTuber, they don't have a chance to make it. You know, on the commentary scene anymore. You agree with that? Give me a second. <laughs> it's a that's a big question to take in. Like to an extent, I agree with it. Like, but for the most part, you just got to bring something super refreshing. Like, here's an example: somebody compared YouTube gaming to Zune. Well, not Zune, Vivo, the other big thing on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Well, Vivo they have 200 artists. But they're all doing their different thing. They all have different types of song, different types of music. Whereas gaming, we're all doing one thing. So we have 200 people doing the same thing. So obviously there are people going to pick their favorites and everybody else is going to trickle down. 
I don't know what it will take to get big into gaming again. Most likely being a pioneer of a new game, such as what Anners did mm-hmm. on Minecraft. Catching a new fad like that is a good way to go to the top. I think you can become a gameplay commentator again and be like really, really popular. But do I think it's going to happen in Call of Duty? Uh, Bigfoot has his spotters, but for the <laughs> most part, no. I disagree. Yeah, I still think that if you make good content and lots of it, that people will find you and you'll you'll get out there. You know, I I, I sort of kind of think Syndicate's a story like that. How big was Syndicate six months ago? I'm, I'm not sure, but that guy, it seems like he blew up in the last six months. I've see a, I see a bunch of people with good content and they go nowhere. Hmm. But do they have a lot of it, right? I mean, it, it, a big part of it is, you know, building that library, right? You want a, a library of, like, 70 200 videos out there every time someone sees one hopefully it inspires them to subscribe to you that's uh you know if you've got that rolling for you then you'll grow someone had told me every video you make make it look like to the person watching it that that's your best one ever you know what i'm saying that's like, blade <laughs> yeah that's yeah right. but you know every video should be you know something right. somebody might be watching who might could help you out yeah, every video should be one that inspires people to sub. And, you know, I that's the mark I aim for every video I do. I don't know if I hit it every time. But, um, but yeah, and, and you know, so, some guy in the stream is fussing at Syndicate. But Syndicate does some things right, man. You know, the Syndicate interacts with his subs maybe better than anyone on YouTube, right? It, the Syndicate's doing live streams all the time, right? It, um, <laughs> there's no commentator who's perfect at everything, but Syndicate's doing something right. Um, I don't know. I could go on. I hate to, to mention names, but you know, like uh, X Jaws, for example, right? That guy grew like crazy all winter long. And there were people who, you know, didn't like this aspect or that aspect of it. So you're not everybody's video is going to be your cup of tea. But um, he was clearly doing something right. You know, yeah. a lot of guys loved his stuff. So, um, so yeah. Uh, but the reason I'm basing my decision on that there probably won't be another Call of Duty guy which there most likely will be, is the fact is, if I lost my YouTube channel right now and had to start over, I don't think I could climb back up to the top. And I know much more about the YouTube commentary game than most people that are starting out today do. Like, I know about time zones, I know about what kind of videos to upload, what to set, I know, you know, all the secret, you know, nits and tricks and all this that everybody else knows. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I could pull myself back to where I'm at now. People's talking about live streaming because you live stream every day or every night. I, I don't have that luxury with my internet I don't, connection. I, I can't live stream. I don't stream, either. You know? I see, that's something else I'm worried about. Like, I have this connection I can I can upgrade to, but, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's going to be like a life-changing thing unless I, I start start <laughs> making more views as a whole. And if YouTube takes off in the streaming thing, I'm going to be left behind. I'm going to have to quit. Sometimes I think about doing YouTube full-time. Right. Like I have it in my head. It's a little like this. Let's say that I was working full time and I was a professional tennis player. And, you know, even though I was only devoting half my attention to tennis, I was still, you know, kind of making it on the pro tour, thinking to myself, like, what could I get done if I went full time? You know, if I devoted all my energy to tennis and became the best pro I could be, where would I go? You know, if I were to do that on YouTube, I could live stream as much as Syndicate. I could make, you know, more than one video a day. It it wouldn't be this thing that I, you know, get done on nights and weekends. It would be this thing that I'd be able to do, to to put my full energy into. How much better could my channel be if my channel was the only thing I was doing? And uh, that's what I did with fighting. You know, I was, I finished up school. I had a good job sitting on my butt. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to throw this job away. I'm just gonna focus on fighting, you know. It's best That's what I'm talking about. Fucking do it. You only live once, Woody. Walk into <laughs> yeah. your walk yeah, into but see, we, yeah. this goes back to that man versus woman thing. Woody has a lot more on his back. That's true. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's you know. Um, <sighs> Woody, could you, could you, do you think you could find another job without too much trouble if you quit? If you left on good terms, I'm sure. You had you that could. as a reference. Yeah, I think so. Do you it. Know, I, I think I do could it. get a comparable job again. I uh, I bet if you left on good references, Woody, you could probably get your same job back. Six yeah. Months from now. 
Yeah, tell them you need to leave an absence. Family this stuff. Why you, <laughs> why, why I used to work at, we said this family. guy named Frank Snook. He quit. He is straight up quit. And he went to another company. Well, six months later, that company filed bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. He comes back, they give him his old job back. It's just because he did it so well, and they had so str they they struggled filling his position. As soon as he asked back, they gave it to him back. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's like two or three kiss asses under you. Like, I want Mister Woodworth's position, you know. But Darn can me. they really do it as good as you? I am quite the boss. I <laughs> Look, so I just get out of the shower, stand in front of the mirror, and be like, "Do it, motherfucker! Do it!" Can I put my shirt on first? It gives me more confidence. In, in yeah. <laughs> I'm no Joe Lozon. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then call your boss, and he'd be like, what's up? Like, I'm here standing here naked. <laughs> I just want to say, do it. I got my dick in my hand, and I started thinking about my job. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, maybe it's uh, – oh, they say discuss it with my wife. Um, yeah. <laughs> my wife's awesome. I, I have discussed it with her, and – um. She's she supports it. She supports so much of what I do that it almost puts all the pressure on me, right? It's it's like you know, hey honey, I want to buy this. Sure, go for it. <laughs> you always say go for it. That means I have to make sure that we can like, give me you know, some negatives. Yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah. Like, hey honey, I'm thinking about you know leaving my job and playing video games for a living. Oh, I support you. Well, how about health? <laughs> but that's if you, if you that's, quit your job, <clears throat> I'd have to buy it. Yeah, see, I'm not. That's a problem I'm about to run into. I'm about to turn yeah. 26. Like right now, I'm currently still my parents because mm -hmm. you can be there till you're 26. But like next next April, I'm I'm SOL. I'm a fat guy with no insurance. Healthcare. Oh, let me give you a personal personal pro tip. When you try to price healthcare insurance for your whole family, your wife and kids, get ready to pay out the chunk. I, I'm imagine I could. I'm paying. I'd pay out the chunk right now if I got it on myself, being like 350 pounds. I'm telling you, because I've already priced it once before. I've been. <laughs> I've been trying to talk her into getting a job just for healthcare. Like yeah. I don't care what they pay you, just get the healthcare and get it on the family. Because so I'm gonna use, for example, I'm gonna use my dad as a <laughs> as an example. I. Uh, he's got great healthcare. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't. But guess what? The, can you imagine getting? You know, because you're getting up there in age too, Woody. To be honest, you know, <laughs> God forbid, you know, 40 years old, you start getting the prostate check. You might have something wrong. I'll be dead soon. For example, and you know, you talk about cancer. You know, have to get shit removed and cut out, and then, hey, there goes anything you made through YouTube right there is gone with medical bills. You know, it's just something to think about. The healthcare, healthcare is always the, the devil in the details. Because I was there thinking, like, I got a good chunk of change right now, but, like, my grandma just had a surgery on a rotator cup that cost $45,000. And it's like, dude, if I hit, if I got something that was worse than that, I'd be broke. You Damn. know? Damn. What, what happened if I fell and broke my hand and shattered my hand? My gaming career is done. <laughs> <laughs> I you love that. that. You, you could insure your hands in the same way that, um... Oh, what the hell is her name? The other J Lo, right? The other one? Yeah, she insured her ass. She insured she? her butt because it was like so essential to her career. Wings of Redemption could do that with his hands. Yeah, but he, in any case, any of it, like I, I could probably just go by and do gameplay commentary or like live commentary like the StarCraft guys do. I'm, I'm sure my career wouldn't be like thrown right down the toilet, but mm -hmm. it would hurt my channel a lot not being able to play like I can play right now. You know, with like not being able to move my fingers the way I can. I wonder if anybody's ever torn a rotator cuff jacking off too much. I <laughs> doubt <laughs> it. I don't think so. That's, that's like that's a more, swimmer's injury. More that's, forearm. You know, big yeah. time. Yeah, I, no, tennis elbow I could see. Yeah. <laughs> Carpal tunnel, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in the stream, they said Mark and Jay's Minicalville would be off the charts if he had to pay for 6,000 hands. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. 6,000 hands. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, you know, it's been buzzing around in my head, you know, that, like, you know, what if I did do this full time? And it's not like I'm, I mean, it, not that life revolves around sub count, but it's not like I have a channel with 75 subs and I'm, you know, wondering if I can make it big. Like, there are some indicators that say, you know, I, I have a future in this. You know, I took that risk one time. 
I had I had a choice in my life. Do I do I re up my, update my resume and start putting in for jobs under somebody, or do I start a YouTube channel and hope to make money? Yeah, it's like fuck it. You only, you only live once. Life you, is risk. You had a dark year too, man. You were, that was a ramen yeah. noodle year. Oh that yeah, was... dog, I lived that that we first when I said that year I lived off three thousand dollars. That's for the whole year. The whole year, I sold a Hardy trailer for three thousand bucks, and I sold a chick. Well, I, it, it might have been five at the end of the year. I sold a couple of chickens, but, but at that whole year, five grand. I lived that whole year. And that's counting buying the video games to keep up with it. That's gangster, dude. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the fact is, life is risk. Don't from history has proven that the people that go big are the people that take risk to do it. Like, yeah. like fucking like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, they both took risks to get where they're at. Obviously, big risks are easier to do when you got a, a nice hundred million hundred million dollar cushion, but. <laughs> It's not that big of a risk then, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's still a big risk. You end up losing fifty million of your money, half your money, but Man, fact I, is, you still got fifty million. You're not eating ramen noodle. I, I think if I think if Woody all he did was YouTube, and all he did was wake up worrying about Woody and use YouTube. Man, I, honestly, I think you'd be off the fucking good chart. I, I, here's what I'm thinking. I think it might bite you in the butt. To be perfectly honest. Like, I'm in the position where I, I do this full-time, mm-hmm. and putting out more videos does not mean your channel grows more. Like, I have all this time to think about all these videos and all these messages to help, and my channel's in the shitter. And Still, I think if you overdo something, you have more chances to mess up as well. There's no doubt that overdoing it can be a bad thing, right? Um, but I, I do one video. A, I, I do a little more than one video a day. Like, Thursdays I'll do two. Sometimes Fridays I do two. But I do like nine videos a week. I think 14 might be a better number. You know, twice a day. Uh, during last winter when x crushed it. And by the way, he crushed it all summer long just based on like searching and people finding it. He was doing three a days. Um, Syndicate, yeah. Syndicate, you know, when he was going super hot, you know, he wasn't doing it. There aren't that many guys who grew off one a days. You know, Scene Energy did. Um but Here, here's here's a question to Woody. Will you think your work would let you drop down to part time, and still keep your benefits? Uh, no, I don't think they. No, I don't think they do that. Um, what was I gonna say? They do have a leave of absence program that I could ask about. You know, like sort of leave the door open for coming back in six months. You gotta yeah. try that. Just just try it. See what happens. If it doesn't work out, guess what? You're back in the same position you're in. And now. I tell you, this this winter would be a. Per- Perfect time to do it too. Yeah, because I think Modern Warfare Three is it, Modern Warfare Three is going to break. He's either going to make this gaming thing happen or it's going to break it. If Modern Warfare Three fucking flops, I think the YouTube community will flop with it. Other well, than like Minecraft. There's um, I'm talking about the Call of Duty section of it. Yeah, I was I was about to say that. There's more to it than than just Call of Duty. Someone uh, I just I usually don't talk about the stream because it's not good for the um the guys driving in their car. But somebody um fussed at scene enters, right? There was a scene enters hater in the stream. And uh <laughs> the thing about that is scene enters never has given anyone a reason to hate him. Like it, he's not hating on other people, he's not hating on his, his subs. He, like all he does is put up com- commentated uh, commentated videos. Why would people fuss at scene enters? I don't know. Not people nice. love to hate. People love <laughs> to hate. There you go. Yeah. How do you deal with haters, Joe? Um I just don't let them get them get to me. I just he fucking, he fucking chokes them out. Yeah, no. <laughs> How do you just not let them get to you? That sounds like a magic trick. Like, it, it's, <laughs> yeah, like we've, oh. we've, talked, we've kind of talked about this before. We just got to remember that you are awesome. That's it. <laughs> you know what just, I mean, like, there's some reason that they're they're hating on you. You know, it means you you're doing something right. So I just don't want to bother me. I just I I tell you how I've been doing the last two weeks. I always assume that everything I say is on public television. Yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, if you're in a game, if you're especially commentating, if you're on the show, yeah, everything you say is is being taken note of. I mean, everybody this day and age has a recording device. Everybody this day and age wants to, you know, wants to hear everything you say. So, I, like, even if I'm on Xbox Live, I gotta watch what I say now. One thing that um, I learned my lessons of, the hard way. Yeah, I know. Um, 
Oh, oh, so <laughs> I saw Shaquille O'Neal at the um, MLG Raleigh event, right? He was there. I think there was a, oh, it was the Jimmy V fundraiser, right? If you don't know, he's a basketball coach and there's a Jimmy V foundation, etc. So Shaquille O'Neal was there. And uh, a couple of guys met Shaquille O'Neal for the only time in their life. And he wouldn't talk to them. He wouldn't shake their hand. He wouldn't take a picture with them. And they walked away like, oh, my God, Shaq is an ass. You know, this guy's such a jerk. And if you're in Shaq's shoes, oh, it must be rough every time you go anywhere to get recognized like that. If somebody wants a little something from you, even if that something is nothing, like taking a picture, all the time, constantly. And, uh, and, and Shaq, you know, even more than, like, I don't know, Boris Becker, the tennis player, has to get recognized just because he's, you know, a, a, a freak. The of biggest nature. motherfucker yeah. in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so when I'm, I have it easy, right? Because it turns off and on for me. You know, if I go to like Cod XP, if I go to an MLG event, then I get recognized a lot. Like I'm in that little subculture. I am, and that's going to sound big headed, but in that little subculture, I'm kind of a celebrity. In the world, I'm not. But if I'm at, like, an MLG event, I am. And uh, when I'm playing on Call of Duty, I get recognized in, in lobbies and stuff. And I have to I, – I keep it in my head, like, oh, you know what? This guy is going to be playing with me for 15 minutes or so, and that's going to be his only impression of me. All he's going to know about me is this. I am, you know, on air when I'm in uh, Xbox Live because you know, that's the only time they're going to meet me. Let, let's make it, you know, a good experience for him. That's the deal. Yeah, you, you look at it like – I'm going to make him go subscribe to me right now. <laughs> it's not just that. It's not business, but it's like, you know, like, um, you know, they, it, I won't mention names, but there have been other YouTube commentators that I looked up to. I was like, oh, my God, this guy's so awesome. He's incredible. I even had, like, mental images of my, in my head of them being, like, captain of the football team, you know, all buff and great looking because I had only seen them play. And then the, when I heard their first commentary, it was like, wow, I'm having a hard time still liking this guy. <laughs> and and that was like a lesson learned for me. Like, I, all right, you know, so, you know, when someone meets me for the first time, I can't be a big fat jerk. You know, I, it, you got to be on. Yeah, Syndicate said that uh, six months ago he had 128,000 subs. Oh, cool. Yeah, and Syndicate, yeah. I don't know if he passed me yet, but he's about to. He gained so many per day that Syndicate's going to race right past me in subs. Um, he's He's just crushing it right now. And uh, so six months ago, he was still pretty big. But, uh, you know, I bet if he went back three more months or so, he would have been much smaller. He's just been crushing it. So, yeah, uh, I lost my train of thought there. But, yeah, when you're on Xbox Live, when you're, you know, at an MLG event or a COD XP type thing, then that's, uh, you know, it's it's on. Be the public you. Now, was you uh, – did- was you kind of nervous being on the stage, on the on the on the stream part of it when you was uh in the tournament at Cod Xp? Yeah, no, 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 no. no at oh. Raleigh. <laughs> um, a little bit, a little bit. It, it, what my big problem was was they um like if I had to commentate, say an optic game or an uh, envious state game or maybe even a fear game, then I would have been set. But um, that's not when they bring me in. Like you know, if optic goes up against fear. They bring their studs in. If there's two lesser-known pro teams, then, uh, you know, they bring me in to talk. <laughs> Games that, that don't otherwise have a lot of interest. So, like, I'm there with Holiday Doc, and there's a pro te- two pro teams playing each other, and I see, you know, like, a name I don't right? I don't even know what team they're on. I don't know what just happened. I sucked at shoutcasting it. I don't know who the players are. I was just trying not to embarrass myself. But uh, that was that was the hardest part about it. Oh, and then... There's monitors to either side, so you can see what's going on. But Holiday Doc's monitor worked, and mine didn't. So I had to like look across the table trying to figure out you know, what was going on. It's it's hard to do, but uh, they told me that I did well, so like I got positive feedback on it. So that was cool. He was right, Woody. Three months before that, he had three thousand. No way. <laughs> yeah, he just that's what he just said. Yeah. So yeah. he can't, he started nine months ago. So, yeah, three thousand subs, and then nine months later, he's got like half a million or so. Yeah, he's, he's crushing it, and uh, yeah. So that I, I don't know. That to me says that, you know at least Black Ops it wasn't too late. Will it be too late in Modern Warfare Three? I don't think so. I, uh, I don't think so. Yeah. You will see what people forget is 
you know, every November when a game comes out, a lot of those games are sold to first-time Call of Duty players. I mean, you have a lot of kids that are just now turning 14 or 15, and you know, or even even younger who's never even played a Call of Duty before. You know, then you have the people like you know us who's been playing COD forever. You know, you so know, the, I, the I don't consider like four years forever. <laughs> the fan <laughs> the fan base is still you know still growing. All right. Oh, you know here, what? Here's okay. what I do on this leaving subject. I know I'm about to turn 26, and Woody's about to turn 40. So I, I know I'm, I'm at least not about to, to turn 40, 40, you assholes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's time to get that butthole check. <laughs> I'm just no. I, I know I'm not going to be kick, kick, castrated by my age till I hit Woody's age. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, oh, fucker. oh. So in last week's painkiller already. Uh, Steve Jobs had recently died. And in there, I, I kind of pointed out some of the negatives of Steve Jobs. You know, he, he had a, a, a kid, an illegitimate kid, and then he denied paternity of that kid. And, and they lived in poverty for a long time. It wasn't until he was so rich that he bothered to, like, you know, accept what he did and support her and, like, send her to college. But he was a billionaire at that point. So, like, I, I kind of knocked Steve Jobs for, um, for, the, for the bad stuff he did. But you know what? I didn't praise him for his contributions to society. And uh, the big one for me is girls in front of mirrors with their iPhones. I don't think there would be nearly as many pictures uh, on the internet of girls in their bras with iPhones in their hands as there would be without Steve Jobs. So uh, a See, tip of the I cap still, to him. I appreciate I still, it. I still put him down because I have a 14-year-old. And I'm like, <laughs> no. Because <laughs> that's I got oh. a girl. I'm like, no. Well, well, Dude, well, so you, you're oh. praising for this. What about the fucking sweatshops? Come yeah. on now. Yeah, sweatshops are. Pro but dude, <laughs> girls and mirrors. Girls and mirrors, wings. This is a serious contribution to uh, to society. I like girls daily. Where would this be without Steve Jobs? Hey, look here. I don't need girls and mirrors. There's so much free porn on there. I can find girls boxing topless within like ten seconds. <laughs> You totally Hang could. on. I want to watch this. <laughs> oh wait, no, I want to see. I want to see a bitch get choked by a naked bitch. You can Instead, probably find oh, that. Oh yeah, too. no, you can real, find that. Yeah, I that exists. See a real <laughs> rear naked. Oh, uh, there's some penalties for losing grappling matches if you're girl on girl. <laughs> what was I gonna say? <laughs> oh, I I've seen a snake give. I've seen a snake give a guy a blow job. <laughs> 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 Uh, the the uh, girls in front of mirrors with oh. iPhones doesn't bother me one bit. So here's the deal. People write me and ask for advice on YouTube all the time. And I reply to more than you people know. Mail Monday is not the only people I get back to. And uh, this girl was saying that there's this guy. She's not quite sure if she likes him. I actually had a girl subscriber. I'm not sure if I can believe this. But yeah. And she says that the guy sent her a topless pic of himself. And I just couldn't let that go. I was like, dude, girls. Girls, listen to me here. Don't send, don't sext people, especially if you're in high school. Like, this picture is going to get around. Everyone is going to see you mostly naked. This is, this is wrong. Like, you, you don't want this to happen. It's on your permanent record. You might think that it's cute the one time you send pictures of your boob or, or downstairs to some guy, but it's going everywhere. Um, it, it, you can take hot pictures of yourself. You can do self photos. You can look sexy. You can wear your I don't know boy shorts or something. You can you can look at a bathing suit. You can wear like a a half shirt. It, these things are just about you know they're getting the same job done. Yet it's really not so much uh, you know it, it's not like the sort of thing that you'll regret forever. <laughs> Somebody guy wrote, somebody wrote, what did younger Woody do? Like, phones and a camera? When I was a kid? Come on. There weren't even, like, cell phones when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, you called a bitch on your rotary phone and asked her mama if oh, she could talk. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, Yo, that link I sent you, that's a rear naked choke. <laughs> let's see. Uh, Those uh, are both guys. I was not expecting this. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't click the link. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Really All naked. right. You know what I want to cover? Since it's painkiller already and there's where we do the bad topics. Um, 
Someone wrote this on Reddit, and it kind of burned into my head. This is your Reddit. <laughs> your protests are broken up by riot cops. Your elections are stolen. Your voice is ignored. How long will it take until you recognize that you don't live in a democracy, but a plutocracy run by the banks? So I thought, hmm, I think I need to look up plutocracy. And uh, here we are. Plutocracy is ruled by the wealthy or power provided by wealth. And I thought about that, and it was like, wow. That does sound like the U.S., doesn't it? It yep. does seem like the wealthy have a tremendous influence over our politics, over Sachs, our government. There's, yeah. there's no there's no influence. It's straight up being what happens is dictated by well, them. When I have to sit and think, how much money is my president taking from pharmaceutical companies to not pass this bill? Something's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know that was a big part of it. You know that, like, pharmaceutical contributions had a huge impact on American health care law. That, you know, they, they literally wrote our energy policy under Bush. And I bet, I, I, don't know, I don't know if it was the energy companies, but people are writing laws, corporations are writing laws that later become the basis of what Congress passes. And, yeah, it's... It's a little insane. I'm starting to think that these, you know, we are the 99% people. Look, I don't agree with everything, but at their core, the notion that, you know, this government, this country is not being run for, um, you know, taking the light of this. us is wrong, is on target. Taking light of this, Rome before it fell to barbarians mm -hmm. was the same. Was in the same boat we're in right now. The rich ran the country. Poor people did nothing but give, make the rich richer. Well, you have to have a you have to have a system by which the people become workers, and in, uh, and you know and enslave and enslave to a country, and that system was put in place a long time ago. Well, you obviously a system is better for order, obviously, but what happens when let's let's just have fictional characters. Let's say Mike is a good is really really good at building you know aqueducts. All right, so Mike builds the town an aqueduct, and then he goes and builds another town an aqueduct. That's that's pretty much the foundation of what our country's founded on. You know, if you're good at what you do, you will succeed. Well, now they've took that part, and uh, let's say Mike has to go to school to build an aqueduct because so, nobody can believe he builds an aqueduct without a piece of paper. All right, so Mike goes to school. Well, for Mike to go to school, he's got to take a loan out with the Bank of America. Bank of America hits him up with such a fat interest rate, he spends his first 10 years building aqueducts to pay the bank back. Or he gets shut down and he's broke, so he has to go to work for the bank. That's, you know, it's forced slavery. That's where the, the banks start ruling the world because right now you're living on credit. I think it was said best. You know, you're trying to impress people you don't like with money you don't have for things that you don't need. Does any of this yeah. make sense? I, could get in the, I try to stay out of political stuff. Because I can get in the politics and monetary system and talk for days. <laughs> what are you guys' opinion on that? Did I not hit it on the head? Or, like, I thought you drew a pretty good analogy there. Yeah, like the metaphor was working for me. I, I don't know the solutions, right? Like, I, I definitely like capitalism. I think that's good. You know, I, I, I'm still on board with the bulk of it. I, I, I guess you know, I, I just want separation of corporation and state. How about that? Uh, I think they should have more stricter laws on companies, and I think people need to get over the fact that rich rich people should be taxed more than poor people. If you draw a if if you draw a bigger if you draw a bigger income, you should be contributing a bigger part to the society. That is, I mean, for you to live in a Bentley and a nice house and all these things, you have you have more means to help people than somebody out there struggling to know you know. Get the two for one chicken at Food Lion, you know, and he fucking struggling putting water in his cap and crunch. He, should he be the guy putting water in Captain Crunch be responsible for the same amount of taxes as the guy eating, you know, lobster paying three dollars a coke because the because he can. Yep. the The other thing is the tax rate. So you talked about the the progressive tax structure, and I'm kind of cool with that. But um, for dividends and capital gains, they get special tax treatment, right? For people that don't know, in the U.S., the top tax rate, I'm going to mess this up. It's something like 31%. And, 33. Um, is it 33? Thank you. So yeah. if you earn a million dollars a year, on that top portion of it, you pay a third of that in taxes. All right. So 
But if you earn your income through capital gains, if you earn your dividend, your, your income through dividends, then you get a much better tax rate. It's like 15%. And, and that's a huge problem, right? So if you're a heart surgeon and you went to school and you busted your butt and you're making $3 million a year on it, then thank you for your contribution. You're cool. If you're Paris Hilton, and you're, what's your, it's your money making your money, not you working for it. It's, you're not getting paid for your hours or your labor or whatever. Instead, it's your investments paying off. Then you get a much, much lower tax rate. And that seems almost criminal to me. Why is it that if you don't work for your money, you pay a lower tax rate than if you do work for your money? I think it's because it's not guaranteed. I think that's what it really comes down to. You're, you're taking a risk on, on getting it versus not getting it. Yeah, not, that I agree, not that I agree with it. I'm, well, I think that's, that's I don't it. know about other states, but I know like South Carolina has this bullshit law that if you're from another country, you don't have to pay taxes on any business you open for six years. That's some bullshit. And that's why you see like around here, right here in the, well, at least in my part of the Carolinas, there's lots and lots of stores like the Sun House or like, you know, places where you see these these Arabic people. I'm not downing the Arabic culture, but this is just what happens to run these things running these stores they'll run them for six years and then they'll give them to somebody else in their family to run up another six years because they changed ownership they get tax free again so they're living tax free on the business and they're pushing other like say woody opens a convenience store in the area he's going to, have to pay taxes since he's an american citizen and he he obviously he can't you know undercut his gas as much as the sun house can because they're not paying taxes at all that's crazy <sighs> all right Want to do a more painkiller already ish topic? This one's for taxes. you. Taxes. Fuck Red, taxes. Redneck, you ready? <laughs> yeah, man. Hypothetical I got one more situation. Thing. I got one more thing before we jump into this next thing on there. Another thing I hate with corporations is the price gouging. Like, for example, heart surgeons, like you use them as an example, or medical fields in the hallway, they charge like two or three dollars for a syringe, where I could go buy a thing of syringes at the dollar store for like a pack of 50. Like, why is that shit allowed to happen? I, I hear you. I, I don't know. I'm being – every time that comes up, they say, well, it's to cover the people who don't pay at all, right? In, in the U.S., they say, you know, if you're hurt, then you don't get any health care. That's not really true. We actually do provide emergency health care. No one gets turned away from the emergency room if they're missing an arm. So, you know, the guy who has health – the guy who does pay has to pay double to cover the ones who don't. You know, the, the, the guys who don't want to have, you know, everyone covered, the, they're actually giving away free health care. That's what the current system does. And, and well, yes, they, so they, they, say, they, you... they say this shit. They say like the hospital's losing money. I went to the hospital the other day, know. and and my my and my grandmother. I went to with her grandmother, and they had to check him into the room. Well, this guy comes by rolling a computer with his own power supply, that he can ch check in, check her into it. And I'm like, why the fuck can't you bring a piece of paper in here, write her shit down, and go back to your office and do that? Why did you need to spend like twenty thousand dollars? On that fucking contraption right there. And you're telling me that you're losing money. It's hard to say. But hey, Redneck, are you ready for this? Lay it on me, Woodrow. Hypothetical question. You are a girl. You with me so far? I'm a, I'm a girl. You're uh, a woman. Woman. How much would you pay for my prostitution services? Does it matter? Right, how about this? What's my age? 24. How I'm 24. I'm a lonely, mm -hmm. lonely girl. You are. And I and it's you. It, I'm your man. Well, you no, know, we was talking about pictures of each other earlier when I shower pictures, you know. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, some stuff's just between us. All right. Oh my bad. I will. I will not talk about it no more. <laughs> uh, if it depends on if you're as large as you say you are. Uh, <laughs> no one's oh. as large as they say they are. <laughs> uh, okay. There we go. We got that out of the way. Uh, four hours? I'd say a hundred bucks. A hundred dollars for four hours? So I'm worth twenty-five bucks an hour? I mean, that's that ain't bad, is it? I don't know. I don't know. The way I look at it, I'm paying you to fuck me, and that's in the, that's a pleasure. All you should be paying me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm with Redneck here. I pay not a damn dime. Look here. Oh Girls have it easy in the terms of sex. Most guys don't give a shit. And uh, if you're willing to give it up, they're willing to take it. I hope Kitty ain't still listening. So, so it, 
So if you if you need a little bit of pussy popping, it ain't too hard to find somebody to do it for you. I you could you could be a four hundred pound fat chick with pimples. Somebody's yeah, down to see, hit it. You gotta fuck. You gotta pay Woody to fuck you. You know what? You don't have to pay shit. Just go to somebody else. Don't have to pay. I mean, like, do you remember Elliot Spitzer? He was the um, was he governor in New York when he got caught for that yeah, high price uh, prostitute or yeah, he's general? the bomb. He should be yeah. president. You know the difference between Elliot Spitzer and me? <laughs> I paid that? a fuck lot more than eighty eight thousand dollars for my puss. Like, <laughs> I can't imagine how much I paid over the last fifteen years. Yeah. but it's a lot. I feel you, I feel you Woodrow. <laughs> 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 yeah, but you get to go back continually. It's like a, it's like an all round, you know, revolving door card you're buying. <laughs> you mean to, you want me to tell you when the relationships are good? When uh, you're coming into the bedroom and you look over and your wife's on the bed naked with her legs up in there, and she says, "I thought you'd want some." <laughs> I'm like, oh man. Nice. <laughs> That's a good relationship. All right. Now, what happens if you tell her you don't? That turns into a bad relationship pretty quick. <laughs> yep. Uh, Pro tip, y'all, you guys out there: if she's naked and you say no, you're fucked. So, it, it's like this long conversation where you got to talk about how you're how you're tired, or maybe you got a headache, or uh, how your feelings. You know, you had a long day. It's where drinking helps. At least then you can have the whiskey dick. <laughs> Joe Lozon. Yo. Why do Call of Duty players keep going back to Call of Duty? There's a lot of good games out there. There's other games that would compete for their attention. But every year they go back to COD. Why do you think that is? Because it's awesome. I, I don't know. I, 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 I like Call of Duty best because it's so fast-paced. I feel like the other games aren't, aren't as quick. They're much slower. See, I agree with him. I, I think he's right about that. The, the controls yeah. are really smooth. The thing handles great. It's 60 frames per second. People underestimate the value of that. Um, it, it's fast-paced. <laughs> All the maps in Call of Duty are designed to maximize conflict, right? If you look at a basic map in Call of Duty, there's three ways to get from one side to the other all the time, right? T take a look at sub-base. There was the left by that tank. There was the right by the water. And then there's up the middle, you know, through past B domination. Y you could go on and on. Favela, left, right, up the middle. Um, in Black Ops, they do the same thing, right? You know, take Discovery, the new map. There's left, right, up the middle. They always have sort of three ways to get from one side of the map to the other. And they do that so that players are constantly running into each other. There's this, like, head-on-head, gun-on-gun fights all the time. And, uh, yeah, that's, I think that is, it's the map design that keeps people coming back to Call of Duty, so they keep it so busy. For for little kids, like, you know, younger kids, you know, in that 10, 12, 13-year-old age range, <laughs> it comes down to peer pressure. It's like, these kids, they're not, if you know, mommy and daddy's going to drop 60 bucks or 100 bucks. They better make sure they're getting a game that all their friends have. That's and then it comes too. it comes down to the numbers. I mean, if you got if you got 20 friends from school, I guarantee about 15 of them that play games don't have Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty, you know? That's a really good point, actually. Cause so, it, it's like, you know, why is eBay the, the big online thing right now? Well, yeah. because everyone else is on eBay, right? You know, if you yeah. want to sell something, that's where the customers are. If you want to buy something, yeah. that's where the sellers are. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, if you're going to – if I was to get one game this year, it would probably be Call of Duty. You know, that's where all my yeah. friends will be. And, yep. you know, I'm in a special case because that's where I'll have subs as well. But, you know, it, it, the hypothetical, you know, high school version of me, yeah. You know, we're all going to get that. And, and we're going to, you know, hang out with each other. Because you so, know how bad it would suck. Like, say I bought Battlefield 3 and I'd get home and all my friends are like, what, what? You bought that game? I'm like, yeah, it's really awesome. You should buy it. And they're like, my mom said no. I have to get Modern Warfare 3. Ugh. And I'm like, yo, mom. I want to get MW3, and she's like, I just bought you a game, Johnny. And now he's going to be sitting there playing by all himself, and his friends will be raping on, you know. Yeah. I, think, I think the spawn system helps a lot, too. Like, people love to complain about the spawn system, and it sucks, mm -hmm. like, people are spawning behind you. But that is what keeps it fast, too. You know, like, I, like, I, I, I didn't like Battlefield at first, and then I started playing it, and I liked it. But, like, it's not nearly as fast because you're constantly spawning the other side of the map. Also, in yeah. Battlefield... To me, the maps are a little sand, like they're sandbox, right? And that's not a, a knock on Battlefield. I, I was playing with guys, and uh, 
they were like, yeah, Battlefield's awesome because you can do anything. You know, you can you can go anywhere. You can go all over this world. You can attack it from the direction that you want to. You can sort of, you know, think outside the box. Whereas in Call of Duty, you know, your options are limited on these maps. There's only so many ways you can play Favela. There's only so many ways you can play, uh, I don't know, Firing Range, right? It, 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 that's that. But um, uh, in Battlefield, you know... It, there are a lot of routes you can take and you can sort of safely get around behind them again. So, yeah. but to me, that slows the game down. So uh, that's just how it is. You can have a slow game. That's really, really fair. You can have a fast paced game. That's just crazy as shit. And it's entertaining. I, I mean, I would take the quicker game wings. Why do you think people keep going back to COD? They were said it. I mean, I know why I go back to COD. I get rewarded for actually doing well. I, the kill streaks are a big reason. I love call of duty. I love, like, if I'm on a 15 kill streak and I'm doing well in the game, I'm going to do even better in the game because the game's rewarding me for it. Like, if I go on a 15 kill streak in Battlefield, it's not going to mean two shits and a fuck. <laughs> it's not. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like, yeah, congratulations, yeah, it's here, here you go, bomb stick. You just <laughs> slaughtered the whole team twice. Who gives a fuck, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 Call of Duty makes you feel like you're more of a role in the game. Like, I could carry a team by myself in Call of Duty, but I can kill 40 motherfuckers in Battlefield and still lose the game by a lot. It, it, it's just, it just makes, it's a confidence building. Like, it makes me feel good when it goes, boom, it goes, whoo, five kill streak, predator missile. That makes me feel good. I don't know about you, even to this day, it's like, yeah, I got a predator missile. Hot damn. I'm yeah, not going to use this bitch. You know, and I get a five kill streak in Battlefield, I get sniped. <laughs> from some kid that's 900 fucking meters away you know exactly it's like it's all about reward system like if they put I know the metals and shit supposed to make you feel good but I want to use something else give me a fucking predator drone every now and then I think Medal of Honor was a, a step in the right direction for like if they were going to go that way in a battlefield series because I like the Medal of Honor kill streaks, but at the same time, they had too much overpowered snipers, and it always felt like, uh, it, it, like in Battlefield 3 Beta, it feels like the deaths you get are unfair. It feels like you get one, two shot deaths. You don't get that too often in Call of Duty. That's yeah. another reason. I don't know. I'm more excited for Modern Warfare 3 than in Battlefield 3, and the main reason it is, the fucking beta was horrible. There you go. The, did the console beta eventually get planes and vehicles on it? No, it didn't. They they released it on PC again at the, toward the last end of it. I know the PC got it, but the console never got it. No, and like I, it's got me skeptical because I played on the Bad Company Two beta, and a lot of people are probably in the stream like, "Who's the beta winks?" I played on the Bad Company Two beta, and guess what? That was the game I bought. You know, two months later. Hmm. <sighs> Is it November the eighth yet? No, it's not. <laughs> Shit. I gotta get this. I got these people on the stream popping. Watch this. All right, Redneck. You ready for this one? Yeah, bro. This is a Mail Monday topic that, that somebody wrote me for my YouTube messages. Here it comes. Yeah. I am a virgin. I've never done anything past make out. I've heard from all my friends that the first time you do anything sexual, you will, well, finish really quick. I found this to be embarrassing as I'm a junior and I don't want people to know I haven't done anything. So I guess what I'm asking is how do I not bust so quick? I have a close friend who, I have a close friend who you would know help with my situation. Should I ask her? <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> look forward to your help. This doesn't have to be a Mail Monday video. Any response is sufficient. So he's worried that he'll finish too quickly and he has a close friend who would help with his situation. Should he ask her? Go ahead, let me Redneck. Give, you, give let me us give your you wisdom. Let me give you the answer. All right. You're going to finish quick your first time. It, there is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The, no. The, the, key, the, key is, the key is just get a girl that's very understanding about it because most girls know that guys that are inexperienced are going to be busting like they... Uh, yes. No, they really knows this that. trick, it right? Ain't, it ain't, no, it ain't like time, that. Your second you know, time you're that not, day. No, you look. I'm going to tell you, it's like Joe was talking about a while ago. You can't walk into a fight thinking you're going to lose. And you can't walk into a fuck <laughs> thinking you're gonna nut within a minute. You don't. No, you have, no, you don't, dude. That's that's why people fuck up. They're too worried about busting a nut too soon, instead of worried about fucking. Like when, and it's time to fuck. 
it's time, you know, I think about, I'm going to put on a fucking show. I ain't thinking about no nut yet. I'm thinking about knocking the bottom out of it, you know? And that's how you, you're, you're, hey, it, it is what it is. Your first time, you walk in thinking, oh, my God, I hope I don't bust a nut. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. And she's going to be like, what? No, you need to walk into it thinking, I'm going to fuck her like that girl on the porn video I watched. Hey, yesterday. look here, look here. Go get you a fucking dildo from a sex shop because you're going to need that motherfucker. She's going to be busting like two minutes. No. Nah. <laughs> my wife was busting two at a time. <laughs> First time. <we're... laughs> really? Yeah. Get hey, me going that... on. Look, it's, my... it's your fucking mind. You know why Viagra works so well? Because uh, cause when you take that pill, you know, when you take that pill, you think, oh, my God, people. I'm about to fuck shit up. I got a Viagra. It's the placebo effect, man. Of course, it might help a little bit, but it's the mindset, dude. I'm telling you. All I've right. seen fucking 90-year-olds get hard-ons and shit with that. I don't think it's nothing to do with mindset. Yeah, it is. I think the shit just works. You take, you take two pills, one of them's a Viagra and one of them's a water pill. Yeah, their dicks still don't get hard because they're getting excited because they know their dicks don't get hard. Think about it. Mind games. All right, I got a new one. Are you ready? <clears throat> yeah. Hey, Woody, I need your help. I have this so-called best friend that lied to me about liking my sister. There was a rumor going around that they were dating, and I confronted him about it. He said he had no idea what I was talking about at first. Then he went on to say, I wanted to tell you a long time ago, but I felt really weird because you're my best friend. He's been my best friend for almost my whole life. He's practically family. And now I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't want to lose a best friend because of this, but he's lied for a month now. I just don't know what to do, Woody. Please help. Man, the fuck up. The motherfucker lied. <laughs> Motherfuckers gonna lie to you your whole life. That's not a big one. Really? Redneck? How's that? Your best friend's dating your sister? What do you do? I've, I've, been, I've been that best friend before. Uh huh. And th this is how. Well, this is what we did. I was the best friend, you know, and his sister was hot. And so eventually, <laughs> I mean, that's how it was. And I told him, I said, look, your sister's fine. We've been friends for a long time, but your fucking sister's fine. And that's, that's how it went. And he's like, look, I don't mind. I'd rather you do it than somebody else, but just don't fuck her up mentally. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the thing. That's where I'm coming from. Like, don't fucking, don't fuck her over. Treat her like you would, you know. Treat her like right, she, right? Treat yeah, her like she is my sister. You know what I'm saying? Going out with somebody is not an act of aggression, right? You no. know, if, no. if if you're my best friend and you're a good guy, my sister, you know, I, I would hope that my sister would get a guy like you or you. You know, it, it, it's not like I'm trying to to keep her out of the dating pool and, and, you know, have her become a nun. No, 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 no. You know, if, if just treat her right, you know, and all, all he needs to do is make sure that he's good to your girl. You know, never hit her, treat her nice and, and, and follow the campsite rule, right? The, you know, you want to leave the campsite as clean or cleaner than you found it. That's the deal. And, and yeah. you need to make sure that her mental health is as good or better than when you found her. And, you, you uh, fucking, you break it, you buy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so, so, um, yeah, so that's that's the deal. Uh, it, I don't I don't find any problem with her. Now he, he should have manned up and and talked to you about dating her instead of you know hiding it because I guess he was afraid you'd behave wrong. But um, yeah, no problem. Joe, what's, what's your take on this thing? Uh, if he was one, if he was my best friend or one of my good friends, it means we trained in the gym together, and I would smash him in the face. <laughs> I get fucking choked. I would give him a little extra. Um, Does Joe Lozon got a choke a bitch? Dude, we need to do like a Mail Monday dual com where you smash everyone in the face. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm upset. I would be more upset about you know him lying to me about it. You know, like I, 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 I mean, if, if someone's dating my sister and they were a good dude and they were gonna treat her good, I'm okay with that. Even if it was one of my good friends no. lying to me about it, that gets you punched in the mouth. The problem is though, is like I said, you gotta be a man. You gotta man up and and get it on the table before it fucking starts. Like, you yeah. Know what I'm well, he'd always be like Scarface and just shoot the motherfucker. <laughs> it's a little extreme, but yeah, that's, yeah. I mean, he could. Come on, you, wings. You'll have you'll have a new girlfriend, all right? It's yeah, but see, that's what happens. You know, 
the guy starts marries his sister and he shoots him over it. Nah, uh, you gotta sort all that out beforehand. Yeah, the, the lying thing is a problem, but uh, in general, like, I, I don't know, you, you shouldn't be so protective of your sister that she can't have a life of her own. Yeah. I mean, the worst thing, the worst thing is for your sister to not have anyone interested in her. You know, that would be way worse than to have. I mean, even if you had a smoking hot sister, you, you don't want her to be the ugly duckling, duckling that no one cares you about. Definitely don't want to knock her up and leave her. So I, I got, <laughs> keep that in mind. So I got a question for Joe before the podcast ends. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm looking over your professional fight record here. Yep. And a guy named Tin Honeycutt got knocked out in 11 seconds. Yep. What was that match like? Uh, I ran across the ring and need him in the face. <laughs> did he? Yeah. Did he sleep I, with your I, sister? I, I he did not. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I, I I came across the ring. I think I threw two punches. He he ducked in to try and take me down, and I need him in the face. Quickest quickest night of my life. Yeah, fucked. But and I had to go. I fought in Florida for that fight. So I flew all the way to Florida. Was down there for a week. Fought for ten seconds, and then flew home. Yeah. You got any fights anytime soon in Alabama or Georgia? Um, I don't think so. I, I won't fight till like probably February or so, and I have no idea. I mean, they could end up being somewhere near there. I don't know. Man, you need to do one in Atlanta. Yeah. I was so you know, Jen's pulled for out in forty-eight seconds. Yep. Yeah, man. They, they've had me fight all over the place. I fought in like Omaha, Nebraska. I fought in Denver, Colorado. Uh, I fought in Tampa, Florida, California a couple times, Vegas a few times, yeah, Pittsburgh, Detroit. Uh, I'm, all over the place. I have it stuck in my head that Dana White said that if there's a Super Bowl fight, it'll be Vegas. Yep. The, 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 yeah. If they do it in, if they do a Super Bowl fight, it'll be in Vegas, which I'm sure they will. They'll definitely. Yep. Is it? Is it? Any or loaded their gloves yet? Is anyone what? Oh, I loaded have a question. their gloves. Go ahead. You answer that first. Have they what loaded their gloves? Loaded their yeah, gloves. Like, like, like yeah. for example, like you could you know inject mercury into your glove and you no, know no, no. increase so, your punch. What they do is uh, for the UFC at least, you you try and you figure out what size glove you need, which you pretty much know. But they figure out what size gloves you need the day before. So when you're at weigh-ins, then they hold on to the gloves and they give them to you the night of the fight, and you get them like right as you, as you're warming up, and you have a commissioner. So like. I actually have my like my, my hand wraps here right now. Like they I get my hands wrapped and the commissioner watches the entire time. You know, then they freaking sharpie him to death right yeah, there. Just right your off. hands are yeah. Your hands are wrapped right now? No no no, I have the hand wraps beside me. Oh oh okay. Yeah, um, that would be a little that would be a little creepy. <laughs> yeah, but some I, boxer, I mean like professional boxers can load their gloves, which I'm not trying to say boxing is a bigger sport than UFC, but at one time it was. I'm sure, pretty sure there's some period of time where somebody could get to that cheating part. Um, they, they could try, but the commission, like, we have much smaller gloves. So boxing gloves are bigger, so th- there's there's more room to put something in. With our gloves, they're so thin. You know, like uh, they're, like, maybe less than an inch thick, probably like two of an inch. Joe, I got to ask this. It, it, yeah. I see him tape up your hands. I, I think I actually saw him tape up your hands, and you have massive amounts of tape on it. There's, like, a half an inch of tape in front of your knuckles. Duh. What are the, like... How much taping is okay? Like, what is? Can you explain the whole taping thing to us? Um, I think you can use one roll of gauze per hand and one roll of tape, and it's uh, usually it's inch wide tape. And you actually you you can't put any tape on the knuckles. You can put gauze over the knuckles, but all the tape has to be an inch off. So basically, if you if you're looking at if you make a fist and you put your finger right on top of your knuckles, you know, like towards the back of your hand, the tape has to be beh- behind the finger. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. And that's, uh, that's, I have a. So that's where all the tape has to be. But like my my boxing coach Steve, like he turns my hand into like a freaking concrete brick. Like, yeah. I could, I could. I had one fight where I had a pretty jacked up hand, and I I fought. It was uh, I, I did three fights in one night. It was like a, a tournament. It was like my last fight before the UFC. The last night I fought before the UFC, and uh, my hand was so jacked up. And then he wrapped it up, and I was punching people all night with it. it was completely fine. You know, won the whole tournament. You know, was was touching fists with everyone all night long after. Took off my hand wraps. The first person I touched, I almost cried. I, I, I felt like my hand was, like, destroyed. I have an idea for an amazing <laughs> giveaway. Okay. <laughs> cut, out, cut, your, cut your hand wraps off your hands and sign them. Give them to Woody and let him do a giveaway with them. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, oh, when they're sharpieing it up, that's what are they afraid you're going to do? Add another roll of gauze to it? Um, th- that's when they're worried that you're going to go and you're going to put something hard inside the wraps. 
like you know you or put like plaster like you can like the big thing in boxing is like that guys will dip their hands in like almost like a plaster and it turns into like a cast <sighs> you know so, so they're worried about you messing with things you know but I've, I've seen like all kinds of like like yeah, you can like kill a man if you load your gloves because you can hit him so hard you could you you probably could but i mean but the, the, they watch us so close it'd be really really tough here's the other thing and then even after the fight they, they make you they watch you take off your gloves they take the gloves they inspect them they inspect the wraps. Sometimes they take the wraps. Like they're, they're pretty thorough about it. When you walk in the ring, they yep. like pat you down like a policeman does. Yeah, and they, right. And they like check I'm, behind I'm, your ears. What are they looking for? They're looking for the knife that I normally carry in my shorts. They're really looking for a knife you're hiding behind your ears? I have no idea. No, uh, when they're checking behind your ears, they're checking for Vaseline. That's what they're checking for. What do people Just do like, with Vaseline behind their ears? Slip well, out choke holds. <laughs> yeah, well, slip out of chokes are like, say you have a guy like Melvin Gillard, you know, if he didn't want to be taken down, he could put Vaseline on like his neck and on his ear, behind his ears and things like that. So once I try and grab onto him, now I get all Vaseline on my hands and now I can't hang on to anything. Wasn't um, GSP accused of that? Was it the BJ yeah. Ben fight? Yep. Yep. Grease gate. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> you think he's guilty? Um, I don't know. I mean, like, some guys will cut weight by, you know, like we, we use Albaline. So Albaline's like a makeup remover. Mm -hmm. So like we'll go in the sauna and, and you'll basically lather up with Albaline and it opens up all your pores and helps you sweat better. But other people will take like a bath in like mineral oil or baby oil and things like that. So what really ends up happening is it gets into your skin and then, you know, when they check you at the beginning of the fights before you, you've broken a sweat and things like that, you're dry. But then as your pores start opening, you start sweating, all that oil starts coming out. You know, and I think that's what generally happens, and people feel greasy and slimy. And people really—that sucks, man. Yeah, I mean, you—if you ever you ever train with someone that uh, like put in like hair gel or something that day, and then you like you try to grab like their neck or something like that, and as soon as you grab it, you know your hand is is slimy and you can't hang on to anything. <sighs> you know, and if if I were training, I, I could you know grab my own shirt and like try and dry off my hand or whatever, or, or you know get the crap off of it, but. When you're in fight shorts and you, you know you don't have a t-shirt to absorb all the oil and stuff, it's freaking impossible. It sucks. All right. Unless you guys have more topic, I want to end with this. Joe, give me your top three pound-for-pound pound fighters in order. In order. Um, Anderson me, Silva. Me, myself, and I. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, right. Anderson Silva is number one. Uh, Frankie Edgar, number two. In, uh, and, and then John Jones, number three. Really? John Jones. Yep. I thought for sure. I, my question was whether GSP would be two or three. I guess he's uh, four. See, I, I, I have GSP as number four. You know, um, and, and here, here's my, my quick reasoning for all of them. Anderson Silva, he's been, like, unstoppable for years now. No one's even come close to doing anything with the exception of, of Chael, who he still submitted him. So he's finished everyone. Um, then I think Frankie is number two because he's basically fighting up a weight class. He's walking at, like, 150, 155 pounds. He should be a 45er. So he's my number two. I think John Jones because he's just he, he's he's only training like three or four years. Like mm -hmm. that is completely crazy that he's gotten that good that fast, you know. And I and I get St. Pierre's number four. But I mean, I think any any one of those four could could change at any point. St. Pierre's won like twenty nine of his last thirty rounds. Yeah, it's crazy. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. And, and people will say that, you know, he doesn't finish and, you know, he he just fights to win and not to actually hurt people. Yeah, he broke Josh Koscheck's, you know, orbital with a jab. So <laughs> the guy's a killer. All right. Crazy. Anyone have topics before we wrap up the show? This St. Pierre guy. He's like this, like, killer French man guy or something? Yep. French Canadian. Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's a monster. Yeah. He this is why I well. carry pocket knives. Guys, they, all they, those they, guys are cutting a lot of weight with the exception of Frank Yeager. Like, uh, like George St. Pierre, he, he fights at 170, but he probably walks at 195, 200 pounds. Uh, Anderson Silva fights at 185. He's probably walking at 210, 215. You know, John Jones is fighting at 205. He's probably walking at 225. So to have Frankie in there with all these other guys that are cutting a ton of weight and him being under the weight is, is ridiculously awesome. Do you remember the days back when Gracie fought? Because I, yep. remember, I remember him fighting guys that were like, he was like maybe one. 40, 150, 160. And he was fighting guys at like 225. Yep. But they didn't I know. Mean, it. it's, it's like you being good at Call of Duty and then playing against someone else that, you know, is a good gamer, but they're good at other things, but they've never played before. Yeah. You know, it's like they just do stupid things that they just, you know, you'd murder them. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> that's the deal. That that's what I count on at every gaming event. <laughs> <You know? laughs> not not in Call of Duty, but yeah, you know, like oh, F FPS Kyle wants to roll with me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like common sense things. Like everything that I learn now, even like you know, I've been training like ten, eleven years. But almost every time I learn something, I, I, I never think, oh, that's a really complex topic. I'm like, oh, that is so simple. Why did I never think of that? It's, it's all common sense stuff. It's all basic fundamentals. Yeah. You know? All right. Who do you think – who you think – one more thing. Who you think is the scariest – like who is the one guy you wouldn't want to fight? Well, that don't make no sense. I don't know. How about this? Woody, who's the one guy you wouldn't want to step in the ring, in the MMA ring with? I'm thinking any weight class. Um, I mean, unlimited, unlimited weight. I don't care who it is. To yeah. me, it would be like Brock Lesnar or somebody, some big, enormous mofo. I'm thinking the – see, a striker, right? The striker is more likely to hurt me. Like, if Joe beats me, there's a decent chance that I'll walk out of it uninjured, just embarrassed, right? If – uh, Anderson Silva beats me. I might look like Rich Franklin does every time he fights him. <laughs> <laughs> so, I th I think I'd be, I think I'd find the strikers to be more unpleasant to lose to, and among the strikers, hmm, I don't know. Maybe Silva. Maybe he'd be the one. John Jones, one of those guys, I think. Strikers definitely have the intimidation, for yeah. sure. I couldn't imagine getting hammer fisted. Yeah, but, you know they're all gonna but, beat me. I'm just trying yeah. to decide how I'd like to lose. Like I think you know, that's, nope. that's where we are. We always say uh, kicks and punches hurt, but knees and elbows kill. You know, it's really not the the, the punch or the kick you It's all the knees and elbows. Yeah. Hmm. Plus, they're not, it. not padded. There's no padding on an elbow or a knee. You have bone. It's gonna yeah. smash in the face. So, like pretty much the hardest part of your body. Uh, the hardest part of their body is going to get smashed on something really sensitive of yours. Your face, your eye, your nose, whatever. Jaw. All right. That was Painkiller Already, Episode 70. Thanks, guys. <laughs>